I'm Scott Hanselman, and it's Azure Friday. I'm here with Harold Campos who's going to catch me up on what's going on in the world of Logic Apps. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. How are you, Scott? I am very well. I'm excited to learn, which is why we do Azure Friday. So, you know, I've done Logic Apps before, but I know that a lot of really interesting work has been happening lately around the hybrid deployment model. And I, I understand what Logic Apps are, but I don't quite understand what it means when we say hybrid. So that's, uh, well, thank you. Thank you, Anne, for having me here. And uh, let me share my screen to show you a little bit about the, the hybrid uh, deployment model. Uh, recently, we introduced a hybrid deployment model for those customers who are looking to meet regulations, to do best of migration, to, to run on-premises workloads and not leaving their, their own environment, right? So because uh, uh, we've been speaking with utilities, for instance, or financial services entities, and they, while they really love the concept of logic apps, uh, they... Uh, they were struggling with the idea of going to the cloud and then coming back with their own data, right? Because it brings, it poses a lot of challenges and also um, in, increases latency. So that is why we introduced this hybrid deployment model that allows customers to run the, all of their integrations in, in their own environments. Okay. When you say in their own environment, are they running it in containers? Are they running it? Uh, how do they, how do you run this? If I make one in the cloud, how do I run it on-prem? Well, that's a great question. So they run it on AKS, on AKS on premises or AKS in the cloud. Um, they run it on, um, we have tested it in a number of Kubernetes distributions, but basically we recommend it to be used in AKS uh, on premises or even in other clouds, right? I mean, they can do that. I mean, we hope that they run on premises or in our AKS environments in Azure, but um, um, yeah, they, it gets deployed via containers. All right. And this was announced in 2024 and people spent time in preview, but it's now generally available, right? Exactly. We just announced it in Integrate at the Integrate 2025 event uh, two weeks ago. And um, with, uh, with, with this feature, we are not only providing the hybrid ability to, uh, um, to run logic apps, but logic apps, but also we are introdu introducing a number of features that are possible because we are running in a, a in a customer environment uh, in containers, right? So you, you know that in a past service, uh, we have to make a lot of technical decisions because we are running in basically in the context of a, of a larger engine. But if a logic app is running in a customer environment in Kubernetes, then we have more freedom to provide some additional features for our customers. All right. Well, I want to see it in, in real life. Absolutely. So let me show you, um, let me show you real quick the, um, one logic app hybrid. So first of all, this is the Azure portal. And in the Azure portal, when I when I go through the creation of a logic app, typically what I do is I create a logic app um, in, um, in, in, in the portal. And then you will see that I have a number of options. You can have a consumption one. You can have a standard logic apps, which are the ones that we recommend for our enterprise, uh, mission critical enterprise customers. And then we have the typical workflow service plan, which is the logic app that you, uh, that you are aware of and the one that runs in uh, app service environment. And this is the one that we have introduced, the hybrid customer managed uh, uh, logic app uh, deployment model. So then if I pick here my resource group, let's say that I take uh, S1 um, and, um, and I select the that name of it, and uh, I'll select uh, the substation so here, right? You will see that I have a connected environment, which is a concept that belongs to uh, to the ACA team, right? The container connected environment it allow us to create this uh, projection of our Kubernetes cluster in, in the cloud. So then there is some information that I need to fill up. Um, one key point to mention is that um, as we are allowing customers to run Logic apps in in their own environment. We that gives us the possibility to use SQL Server as a storage for the runtime. Typically in the cloud, we use uh, Azure Storage, a blob storage, to store the runtime information, you know, history information, and things like that. With um, with hybrid, we introduce the the capability to use SQL Server to do these operations, so they can run SQL Server in the cloud or on premises or anywhere else, and then. For artifact storage, because um, when you integrate, you typically need artifacts. For instance, if I were to pick this workflow here and I wanted to integrate with a very legacy IBMI program, then I would be needing some metadata that is available through artifacts. 
to connect to a legacy system like this. So then for that, uh, for that uh, information to be available, we allow customers to have uh, an SMB file share where they will be storing the artifacts. And, um, and, and that gives us the flexibility or that gives customers the flexibility to, uh, to uh, store all of these artifacts in an SMB uh, file share and to use uh, SQL as a runtime. Okay. So then let's say that we create, we created the, the, um, the logic app. So this is a, this is a logic app, how it looks like uh, typically in, in hybrid, you will see that you have, um, the overview, the workflows, uh, the artifacts. And one thing that is new for logic apps hybrid is the concept of revisions and replicas, where you will see that every time that you make some, uh, changes to the logic app, then they will have to be, um, they will be added as a, as a replica, as a revision here. And, and these revisions, we are only showing the active revisions. So there are some inactive revisions every time that um, there can only be one active revision. You will see that you can customize the settings for the containers, the environment variables. You can decide which image to use. So it gives you a lot of flexibility as to the things that you can do with an environment of this type, right? You have secrets, ingress, and such. Um, then going back to the typical of logic apps, the element and the artifact in the logic apps is a workflow. Right. And, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one of the, if I were to create a workflow, I have three types of workflows or objects uh, as a workflow. One is the agent, which is uh, our new feature for AI to create agent loops. Um, we have the stateful workflows that allow you to, um, to store, to be more uh, resilient and to provide higher reliability and the stateless that is optimized for lower latency. So then I created these. Uh, commercial agent that is basically an agentic, uh, an agent loop and uh, as a workflow, right? And then we see that I have, uh, I receive a credit application and then I send, uh, I use, uh, I enter the deployment model name and then I give the instructions to this agent. And then I have a number of tools and each one of these tools, they will be calling uh, workflows that will do the work of interacting with these uh, the systems that uh, I typically integrate against, right? And, and 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 I think what is key here is that if you realize that this is running on AKS right now, and, and this is running, this is a test environment, so this is running in, in the cloud, but it can run on premises in a customer Kubernetes environment. They are actually doing AI from their Kubernetes environments on premises, right? So, and that's a great concept for us to share because in the end. This is something that will open a number of the scenarios that uh, in the past were not feasible. For instance, for Visto customers who uh, who they love Visto, but but you know the life cycle for Visto is just coming to an end. So then, Logic Apps is the successor of Visto server. So then, we are looking for customers to look not only to to move from Visto to some uh, uh, and to have similar features, but also to have more modern capabilities like Logic Apps. Yeah, I think it's really important to think about this designer and look at that designer uh, for folks that are maybe learning about Logic Apps right now for the first time and understanding that this is a really clean business flow that is connecting maybe a 40 or 50 or even 60 year old mainframe to a modern AI commercial agent. Uh, you're really up leveling the business problem and expressing it in a very clean and easy to understand way. And I think that it can't be overstated how easy it is to get to this point. It's pretty amazing. Thank you, Scott. And yes, so let me leave this running just uh, for a second. When I go to uh, to run with payload, so then I'm able to, to, to enter just some basic information for this workflow to run. And in the meantime, while this is running, then uh, one thing that we also added for customers, because there is no app inside on premises yet, um, it's uh, we added support for open telemetry. So then customers can use open telemetry and uh, the, the distribution or the, the vendor that they, of their, their choice. So then they can, they can log what is happening with their, with their workflows and logs and in the future metrics. Uh, and they don't need to use up insights, right? So, right. Um, and if people aren't familiar with open telemetry, like back in the old days, you would run this on many, many nodes. It would go into a text file. If something went wrong, you're digging in the text file for the rest of your life. And open telemetry has really revolutionized logging for everyone. So by logic apps and hybrid logic apps getting on board with OTEL, you're able to use a dashboard like this, CloudMate. You could use the .NET Aspire dashboard or any open telemetry dashboard to explore what's happening inside your logic app, which is pretty slick. 
Exactly. Thank you. And and one thing to add is that um, with uh, the same time we added uh, support for open telemetry, we also added the capability for the customer to do uh, SIP deploy, which is the ability to deploy from VS Code. Say I have a workflow and I want to deploy it via um, um, to to update the image, the container image in, in 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 the customer environment. So then we have allowed a new deployment uh, way for customers to just um, use our APIs of deployment to to go directly to the to the image from VS Code. I'm not going to do that right now because it's taking some time. But I'm going to go back to see how the execution go uh, went. Right um, before going to to see the results of this agent, one thing that I wanted to call out is that we also recently inter introduced one uh, feature called the Rules Engine, which was uh, formerly available in uh, in Bistock Server. Um, I don't know if you remember back in the Bistock days, you know, Rules Engines they were uh, they were common for these uh, multiple scenarios where customers were looking to have governance in systems. So we introduced uh, this same runtime for the rules engine in Logic Apps, so the customers can reuse their uh, the rule sets that they have built using Bistock Server, and they can run it in uh, in Logic Apps, right? And it's two functions and and then with an action. So then let me show you let me show you the results of this um, of this uh, agent the agent execution, and so it's um, let's see if it's well, still running apparently. And, um, I was actually a technical reviewer on BizTalk 2000, one of the books. So I do remember BizTalk, and people say mean things about BizTalk, but it got work done. Well, you know, I, I think uh, one of the challenges that we had back in the day with BizTalk Server was that uh, these uh, um, it, it had so many capabilities that customers used it in many different manners, right? I mean, there yeah. are some so they are very. So I think the the knowledge of integration today it's much richer than what it used to be twenty years ago. Like for us, it was explaining how Vista work was something like show me a demo. So then when I was showing moving a file from A to B, it was it seemed like a copy paste, but there was an SAP system in the middle, a mainframe system in the middle. So there were a lot of things happening. So yeah, it was uh, it. And now we are asking customers to uh, to go uh, and, and leave this talk and come to Logic Apps because uh, this is this is the next uh, great other thing that they can they can do for integration. So I see timing on each of those things. I see the talks to the mainframe. It all happened. I see the agent chat on the right. It looks like this was a successful chat. It it was it was. And if you realize something, um, when I when I run this uh, uh, this previous uh, this previous workflow, you would see that. Um, there is this a credit evaluation for this person. Um, there is the original credit proposal and such. And then in the end, there is this offer that says you are pre-approved for Norwegian Platinum Logic Apps credit card, and we will send you a bottle of wine and such. That's fantastic, right? That is also coming from these uh, from these rules that I have in this uh, in this um, in this um, a rule set. So in other words, what we are doing, if, if you have realized, we have integrated many different things with AI. And then we got the response back, and then this is done in the hybrid deployment model, right? So this is done, done in, in, in Kubernetes, in your own environment, in um, with your own governance. And, and I think that's that was a great thing. Uh, yeah. For, you know what for, I like about this is that it's hybrid in multiple ways. You're hybrid in a deployment model. You're hybrid in that you're bringing the past and the future together. And while you could have done the rules engine in the in the chat with prompting, it wouldn't have been deterministic because business rules matter. So you use a rules composer to do it the right way. So it's a very clean separation of concerns, which I think is nice to note. No, thank you. Thank you, uh, Scott, and your, your spot on. So now let me go just go back to finalize what I wanted to, to share with you. Right, so there are some hybrid concepts. I mean, this is this is the hybrid deployment model is, uh, it uses uh, the, um, ARC, right? So it's an ARC-enabled customer. So then we have been working with the ACA team, with the Container Apps team, with the ARC teams to make sure that this is a reality. Um, while this is Logic Apps, there is a there is an architecture, that, a complex architecture that we have enabled for uh, for for these customers to to be able to run in their own environments. And and I will be happy to provide a, any more information. You know, um, on, on demand, and I think uh, I think some of those links are available. But um, yeah, this is what I wanted to share. That's fantastic. So show me uh, your maybe your last tab, or where am I going to go online to learn more about this? If I want this now, 
Where do Absolutely. I go? Absolutely. You, sh you should go to these uh, create a standard logic app workflows for hybrid deployment on your infrastructure. So there is plenty of information in here on how to get it started. There are a set of instructions as well in the uh, that you can follow after you, you have your own environment. One of the key things is that um, um, we provide scripts for customers to, uh, to just uh, execute, right, to do this work. So the only thing that they need is to have their own Kubernetes environment, their AKS environment. And then once they have it, then they just run the PowerShell scripts that we provide, and then they will have everything set up for them. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Harold Campos, for spending time with us today. I've been learning all about Azure Logic Apps, the hybrid deployment model today on Azure Friday.